Good afternoon, grade nines. I hope you're all well on this Friday afternoon. I say it's going to be very chilly over the weekend. So you need to keep yourselves warm, hey? But before we're going to start, still continuing with the general ledger, what we have started yesterday. Let's just greet each other in the chat group. Right, you guys will see there in the contents that we're first going to revise a little bit about the general ledger, what we've done yesterday. And then we are going to do an activity. First of all, I will give you the activity in a few minutes to do it, and then we will mark it as well. And then after that, by the end of the lesson, then we're going to talk about a little bit about the assessment of, of next week. Right, but let's start with the revision of the general ledger. Now, yesterday, we have started with the general ledger, and you guys will remember, I said you're going to get the left-hand side and the right-hand side, but in accounting, we don't talk about that. We talk about the debit and the credit side, and the general ledger is basically a T account. It looks like a T. And everything that's on the left-hand side of that T account is the debit side. And everything on the right-hand side of that T account is going to be the credit side. And then if we just look at the format of the general ledger, how the subheadings is going to look like, then you will see what you have on the debit side, the same details you're going to have. You're going to start with your date. And remember how we said yesterday, how you're going to write. Okay, and the first column is the year and the month, and the second column is going to be the day on which the transaction happened. Details, right, there will be the friend's name, okay? Normally, in your case, it will be bank, but we will look at that right now. Full folio column, F-O-L, folio column. Um, we said we, you don't really use it this year, but if you're going to use it, then you're going to write the abbreviation of the journal that will be involved of the transaction. Right, and then yesterday I've told you about Lady Adelic. Okay, just again, uh, the A is for assets, the D for drawings, the E for expenses, the L for liabilities, the I for income, and the C for capital. And then the first three, that means the assets, the drawings, and expenses. Every time you're going to do those entries on the debit side of the T account, and if it is liabilities, income, and capital, then you're going to do it on the credit side of the T account. But what is important here is you need to know what is assets, what is expenses, what is income, etc. Then again, there's an example of a capital um, T account. Okay, so if you look at Lady Adelic, you must first decide on which side of the account you're going to do the entries and see for capital according to. You got to write it in on the credit side. All right, look at how it was entered. First, with the date, the year, the month, and in the second column, the day on which the transaction happened. With details, you will see the word bank here because with the general ledger, every transaction works according to the double entry principle. We're going to revise that now. But basic entry principle is where there is two friends involved. So if you do capital account like here, you're going to write the friend's name bank inside. All right. 
and in the if we go to the amount column let's say it was in this case 10,000 rand then you will just write the amount in the amount column right regarding the double entry principle okay what did we say for every debit a credit so you can see the two T accounts is now next to each other because the, this is the two frames working together. So if you're going to enter um, the transaction on the debit side of one account, then it will be automatically on the credit side of the frame. Okay, so that is what the double entry principle is. Or for every credit, there is a debit. So if the interest is going to be on the credit side then uh, of the account, then um, your friend is going to be on the debit side. So that is what we call the double entry principle in accounting. Good. Let's look at more examples. There's a transaction. It is saying the owner invested capital into the business, 50,000. So let's first look at the information in the transaction. What is important? Two things. The other thing that is important here is what is the transaction all about? And it is a capital transaction. Now again, I'm quickly going to move back to Lady Eidelek. So if you look at Lady Eidelek, on which side of the capital account must you make the entries, then you will see it's on the credit side. In your case, mostly the friend will be bank because if you invest money, like you invest capital, what is happening with your business bank account? It is increasing. That small column, you will see the CRJ for cash receipts journal because normally if you read the transaction, in which journal will you write a capital transaction in? And that is going to be the CRJ. And then the amount is 50,000. Right, now you will see I've done the bank account. So I've started now to put the two frames together every time, okay? So if, so it's the same transaction, but you're going to do the bank account now. Now, first of all, okay, what is bank? Bank is an asset. So either you could have said here, if I look at Lady Eidelek, assets must be on the debit side, okay, and bank is an asset. Or we can talk and we can say, right, according to the double entry principle, and look now at capital, for every credit, there is a debit. So if you have credit, the capital account, then you must automatically go and debit the friend that is going to be bank here. Right? If we look at the entries, date, as I said, I've just used to randomly a date, 2020 May 30th. And look now with details, there you're going to see the word capital. So now let's check. When you have done the capital account, you've write the friend's name in that was bank. Now you're doing the bank account. So what is now the friend? It's going to be capital, and that is what you're going to write with details. The small folio column, still CRJ, and then the amount, of course, is still the same, the 50,000 Rand. So all these two friends, two accounts is here. Look again when I'm saying the double entry principle. For every credit and capital's credit, there is a debit and you debit it bank. Another example, and again, you will see I've put both friends here. Pay the telephone or pay telecom the telephone account with a check, a thousand rand. So what is the two important things now from the transaction? I said firstly the amount, 
That's 1,000 Rand. Secondly, what is this transaction all about? It's about the telephone account. Okay. Now let's go back to Lady Adelaide and see regarding telephone. What is telephone? It's an expense. And according to Lady Adelaide, expenses must be debited. Right. So let's go back. So there you will see there's the entry of the telephone account on the debit side. Again, I just put the date in there, the 30th of May. Look there with details. So you go in telephone, you're going to write the friend's name. That is going to be bank because you pay it out of the business bank account. If you pay me something, what is normally your journal? The CPJ, the cash payments journal. So that will go to the small folio column. And the amount is 1,000 Rand. But as I said, remember the double entry principle. Two friends involved. Okay, so who is the friend here? Again, it is bank. And the double entry principle is saying for every debit, and you have debited telephone, there must be a credit. And you're going to see we're going to credit bank now. Right, if we look at the entries, there's a date. And then with details, you notice the word telephone. So now in bank, you're going to write the friend's name. And in this case, it's now the telephone. Still, the entry should be in the CPJ, and the amount stays the same, the thousand rand. So again, look, double entry principle for every debit, and we have debited telephone. There is a credit, and we have credit bank. Telephone and bank are the two friends here. Telephone is an expense, and expenses are always on the debit side. Right. Um, before we get into that slideshow, you will notice now, if we look at the previous one, there was entries on the debit side of bank. And if we look now at this one, then there are uh, entry on the credit side of bank. So bank is one of those strange accounts that can have entries on both sides, on the debit side and on the credit side. And we are going a little bit later, I'm going to show you how we are going to handle bank from now on. Okay, but before we're going to get to that, there you go. There are a few transactions there. Let's first quickly read through the transactions. They say they purchase a vehicle from Basson Motors per check, a thousand rand. Pay the municipality per check for the water and electricity bill, 1,800. Rent receipt from W. Smith, 8,000 rand, and the receipt was issued. And the owner withdraw money from the business for his own use per check, 500 rand. So there are one, two, three, four transactions there. I hope you've got your pen and paper ready. So what I want you to do is very roughly, you draw yourselves two T accounts with every transaction, and then you write in um, the two friends, the friends names at the top, and how you're going to do the entries. So basically, if I can go back to the previous one, so you're going to draw, let's say, a T account. At the top, you write telephone, and you do the entries. And then you do the same with bank. So you draw T account, you write the word bank at the top, and you do your entries, let's say, if it must be on the credit side, you do it on the credit side. So don't struggle now to draw up very nice columns and put the headings in. You're just going to do it roughly for those transactions, and then we're going to mark it. I'm going to give you a very, very quick pick here, look, okay? And I'm going to take it away. I think you have noticed what I've done. So you just make a T and you write the friend's name and the amount basically in there. All right, so I'm going to give you a few minutes for that to do. Uh, let's say about eight minutes should be enough, okay?
Maybe if you have a question about the work or something that you don't understand, then you're more than welcome to put it in the box also now. If you're finished, just stop there for me in the box then, so I can get the indication of how far you are as well.
Right, we're going to start uh, marking it, look at it. So I will jump between this slide for the transaction and the next slide for the T account. So let's start with the first one. It is saying purchase a vehicle from Basson Motors per check, 100,000. What is the two things that you must look for? The amount, 100,000. What is this transaction all about? About a vehicle, right? So let's go and check. How your T accounts is going to look like. Okay, right. Um, I've put here a few accounts on. Okay. Um, the idea will be here who is the two friends? Okay. Of course, vehicles will be the one friend, and then bank is going to be the other friend. Okay. Now let's start with vehicles. Oh, I hope you've got Lady Adelaide in front of you. If you look at Lady Adelaide, which side of vehicles must be the entry? Now, what is vehicles? Vehicles is an asset, therefore it will be on the debit side. Okay, don't worry now about dates and all those things. What is your details going to be? So what are you going to write inside the account? The friend's name, that is going to be bank, and then the amount is 100,000 right from the transaction. Then remember, you have done vehicles now. Okay, so you still need to go and do the same bank. And remember again, the double entry principle is saying for every debit, okay, and we have debited vehicles, there must be a credit. So what are you going to do with the friend bank? You're going to credit it. And if you're looking back, there on the credit side, there's the entry um, from the friend vehicles, 100,000 rand. Okay, right, let's go back. Next um, transaction. Pay municipality per check for the water and electricity bill, 1,800 rand. So the amount, 1,800. What is the transaction all about? Water and electricity. Right, let's look at the T accounts. Let's start with water and electricity. Okay, what is water and electricity? It's an expense. And what is Lady Adler telling you? Expenses must be on the debit side. So on the debit side, you're going to write the friend's name bank and the amount is 1,800. Right, and then you need to go and um, credit bank that if is the friend okay so bank on the credit side you're going to write down water and electricity 1800 rand so again what is the double entry principle saying water electricity was debited and for every debit there's a credit and bank we have credited with the 1800 rand right next transaction Rent received from W. Smith, 8,000 rand, and the receipt was issued. So the amount is 8,000 rand. It's about rent received. So it's a rent income transaction. Right. Let's see how we're going to enter it in the T accounts. There at the bottom left hand side, there is your rent income T account. Look at Lady Adelaide. Income is on what side? On the credit side. So on the credit side is the entry of 8,000 rand. Your friend is bank. So that is the details that you're going to write there. Okay, so we credited rent income. Double entry principle is saying for every credit, there's a debit. So what are you going to do with the friend bank there? On the debit side, you're going to write the entry and there at the top, you will see it rent income on the debit side, 8,000 rand. Okay, and then the last transaction name, the owner withdraw money from the business for his use um, per check, 500 rand. Remember, what do we call it if the owner withdraws something for his own personal use? We call it drawings. Right, and the amount is 500 rand. 
And okay, how are we going to enter it? Right, according to Lady Adelaide, which side of the wings must be the, the entry? On the debit side, your friend is bank, the amount is 500 rand. And then with drawings, we have debited it. The double entry principles is saying for every debit, there is a credit. So what must you do with bank now? On the credit side, you write the friend name their drawings, 500 rand. Right, I told you, well done. I see you said you've got everything correct. Wonderful. Right, so I think what you have noticed here is every time when you have an account and every time support bank is your friend, you need to look at Lady Adela to understand on which side of the account the entry must be. And then automatically the friend will be on the opposite side. Okay, now look at bank. You've noticed the um, I made all the entries in bank. Okay, doesn't matter if it's on the debit or credit side. So now you can think for yourself, if you have like 20 transactions, then you're going to have 20 entries in the bank account. And that is quite a lot. So at the end of the day, you're going to have a very big, big account. So with bank, we're going to do something else at the end of the day. But I've started to do, to do it like this, so you can understand the double entry principle and where the amounts will come from. Right. So quickly scan through the bank account you see now on your screen. Again, I'm going to say, it doesn't matter if there's debit and credit entries, as long as you can see with every transaction, the amount is supposed to go to bank. And then I'm going to move on now and look now at bank. Right, a much smaller bank account you have now. So what we normally do with bank is, and I'm going quickly back to the previous slide. All the entries on the debit side, you add them up, get the total. Now in this case, there was only that one entry of 8,000 Rand. And you still write the total on the debit side. You're still going to write your dates and all those things in, but for listing every income or everything on the debit side, you have added up and you write it one total there, and that we call total receipts. So you need to know to write those words with details, total receipts. And where does that information come from? From which journal? So what are you going to write in that small folio column? And that is, look at the words, total receipts. So it's coming from your CRJ. And now you do exactly the same on the credit side. So let's first go back. Look at the bank account there, right? There was three entries on the credit side. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up those totals. You're going to write that one total on the credit side. And that is now the 102,300. And that is going to be your total. It's a total that you've wrote there. So that is your total for total payments. So that is what you're going to write there with details. And if it is total payments, then your journal in the full column will be CPJ. Right, so yes, your T account is going to look like this, but only your bank account is going to be going to look like at the end of the day, like this, where you're going to add up all the totals and on the debit side, it will be your total receipts from your CRJ and on your credit side, it will be your total payments from your CPJ. Right, basically, before I get to that slide you see now, okay, that is for the work that I'm going to do for today. 
So I quickly want to go back. As I said yesterday, the general ledger is normally not a very easy topic, and we are going um, to talk on Monday still regarding the general ledger, but on Monday I'm going to finish this topic um, because the assessment that we will talk about right now um, is also going to be about the general ledger. So before we get to the assessment, let's go back. That slide is important for me, so you need to understand what you say mean by the double entry principle. Look at the two friends, the two T accounts. For every debit, there's a credit. Or for every credit, there is a debit. Right? Then I think by now you understand the headings that what is the debit side and the credit side. Um, you need to know how to write the transactions into the general ledger, into the T accounts. Okay, so just again, I'm going to mention this. If you look for instance here, capital, then you have your date. Please keep it in that way. So in the first column, you write the year at the top and the month under it. In the second column, the day on which the transaction happened. Then with details, you're going to write every time the friend's name in there. And then with FOILIAL, if you use it, then it will be the journal that you are supposed to write the transaction in. And then 50, or in this case, it was 50,000, but write to take the amount from the transaction and you're going to write it in there. I just want to tell you, it's still today very easy because I only done it now with the CRJ and the CPJ. But you have already done the debtor's journal, the creditor's journal as well. And that is normally the part where it's getting very difficult. So that is the part that we first are going to do on Monday. Okay, so still yesterday and today is just basic so you can understand what is the general ledger. Okay, um, and then just getting to this reaction. So remember every time two friends is involved, the one friend will be what the transaction is all about. The other friend that we have up till now will be normally bank, but that is also going to change on Monday. And then you need to take value aggregate to decide on which side of the account the entry must be. And of course, the friend will then be on the opposite side. And then especially regarding bank, remember, the one that you see now in front of you is where the entries were still separated. But we're going to move to the bank account. That's going to look like this, where you're going to add up the totals on the debit side, and that will go to total receipts. And you add up the totals on the credit side, and that will go to total payments. Right? Any questions that you want to ask so far? Put it in the box. Right, and in the meantime, about the assessment of next week. Okay, um, it is saying that your assessment will take place on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. Monday, normal lesson about general ledger. Okay. So let's first take that, okay? Um, the school was decided first to do the assessments next week. And then I received a message a little bit earlier today to say they want to change the date actually, but I'm going to stick to next week. And we're going to do it next week and we're going to finish it, all right? So if some of your other subjects is going to be on the week after that, that's fine, then you work according to that. Then I'm actually glad if we can finish ENS next week because then you will also have some more time for your other subjects, right? Okay, so what I'm telling you now is the following, okay? Monday, you still have a normal lesson and we're going to finish the topic, the general ledger. Then on Tuesday, Thursday, uh, sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then you're just going to do assessments. And then I see there's a, a question. Friday is going to be normal lesson again. Okay. Now, what is the topics that you need to know for these assessments? 
it is trade unions, and you will remember we have done each I think there's about two or three slide shows that you need to know about the trade unions. And then the two big topics will be the combined exercises. So I'm going to give you a lot of transactions where it's going to be mixed. And then I'm going to ask you to go and complete the journals, the CRJ, the CPJ, the DJ, and the CJ. And of course, then the other big topic, the one that we are actually still busy on, and that is the general ledger. So again, I'm going to give you a few transactions and you're going to draw up and do the T accounts for me. So I'll give this information to you now already, although we're only going to start on Tuesday with assessments, because maybe you want to prepare yourselves already over the weekend about it. Um, I'm not going to tell you to say, right, Tuesday will only be combined exercises and Wednesday will be the another topic. For all three days, you need to know all three topics. Okay. Then, how is it going to work? All right, you go in, you're going to join like you normally join the meeting, and then you will get your questions on the PowerPoint slide like you know it, okay? So if it looks like, if I can just go back, something like that, for instance, okay? Well, I'm going to put the transactions, and then I'm going to give you some time to go and do it, okay? Um, regarding the time, don't stress, there will be more than enough time to complete it. So that is why I do it over three days. So let's say we do a, a, norm, a normal lesson of 10 minutes, for instance, when we talk through it, then I'm still going to give you the full 45 minutes to do the assessment. So I think now you can understand that there will be more than enough time to finish the assessment for everyone. Right, so as I said, you're going to get your questions on the normal slide show. You're going to do it um, on a piece of paper. So important is on Tuesday, when you're going to lock in, you must be ready with enough paper and pen. And then when you're finished after the lesson, then you're going to take a photo of those papers that you've done, and then you're going to email it to me, and I'm going to mark it. Okay, my email address is normally always on the first slide, but I will definitely give it through then on Tuesday again. I just want to see there's a question in the general nature. Do you also include the BDCD? We're getting actually still to the BD and CD, so not up till now, it's not necessary to do it, but we will get to that in a later stage. All right. So if there's any questions, you need to put it now in the box. Questions about the assessment for next week, questions about today's lesson, or any questions that you have, please put it in the box now so we can answer it for you. We have enough time to do that. Especially make sure that you are ready for next week. And please people, um, don't come with excuses to say that you cannot attend next week's lessons regarding the assessments, okay? You know this is going to be very important, so you need to be attending the classes and you need to do this, all right? It doesn't look as if there's any questions, but I just want to make sure that you are ready. So again, remember, Monday is still normal lesson. The assessment will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, normal lesson. 